Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. It was in the shot. Grab my pointer here. So I've rebuilt the power amplifier. It's right here. Go to the GoPro video, you can see the top down view. And it's uh, very similar in layout to uh, GW3UEP's original design piece of PC board. Um, the coils all spaced out. I've got the um, resonating coil and the filter coil positioned up about oh, three quarters of an inch off the board. So everything uh, spaced out real nice and it's made it completely stable. It works. Uh, I had to rework my driver stage a little bit to get a bit more drive out of it. Um, it's still just a single transistor with a 1K resistor from uh, 12 volts to the uh, collector and a 2.2K resistor on the base back to the signal coming out of the SI5351. And then you tap the collector um, below the resistor there and that's where your output from the driver is. And here's the uh, scope um, snapshot of the driver output. Plenty strong. And uh, now I have the scope hooked up. Uh, let me move this camera. There's my MFJ dummy load and I have measured this with the mini VNA. Measured its impedance at 475 kilohertz at, uh, and it shows 56.9 ohms impedance. And an SWR of 1.21 to 1. 1.2 to 1. So even though 475 kilohertz is below its spec range, because it's really only spec to operate from 160 meters up, we can use it. Um, 56.9 ohms is, is not bad at that frequency. So I've got a BNCT here tapped for the oscilloscope so I can watch the output. And uh, I've got the uh, VFO still in the old chassis here, just tapped in to the PA for testing. And I've clipped in power. So we're all ready to test. And uh, at idle, we're drawing 60 milliamps, which is the uh, current draw from the Arduino and the SI5351. And maybe just a few milliamps trickling through the power MOSFET here on the, uh, on the amp, but not much at all, if any. Um, so I'm ready to uh, key down and see what we get on the scope. So here's the scope. It's hooked up to the. Uh, it's hooked up across the dummy load. And I'm going to key down. And boom! Look at that. A nice, pretty sine wave on the output. It's working. We've got power. And if I turn the receiver on, I've got a little Grundig receiver sitting over here off to the side. So, you can see that it's keying plenty fast, it's nice and clean. I think we got a good power amplifier. Now all I've got to do is just rebuild everything into the new case and uh, do that all up. This is the case I'm going to use. It's an old Radio Shack television distribution amplifier. Got a lot of extra holes in the back I got to plug. <laughs> uh, I'm going to uh, probably use one of these for the uh, antenna connection, receiver output, power, and then plug these. And then on the front, I gotta clean up all this glue and gunk off of here. And uh, we'll, uh, well, we'll have to, we'll, we'll drill some new holes to put the uh, tuning control, the spot switch, the uh, power switch and the key input. And then in the middle, <coughs> Go to the GoPro view. Uh, the power amplifier is going to sit in on this side of it, right, like about so. And then I'm going to, I've got some bigger PC board material, but I'm going to cut a piece of PC board material to sit in here as a divider that'll be just long enough and just tall enough to fit under that lip so it'll, it'll mount right in here. And then I'll put the VFO board over here. I'm going to put the switching relays on a separate board back here. 
And then through this divider, I'm going to mount some RCA pass-through connectors, right? So the RF out from the PA is going to come through on an RCA jack here right to the relay board. Um, over at this end, I'll have an RCA pass-through for the VFO signal in that will then go right up here to the uh, input on the PA and a pass-through for a power lead for the PA that'll go through a ferrite bead on this side as well to choke off any RF and come right down here to the relay board where it'll switch power to the PA. So that's the plan on the case. That's what I got to start working on today. So I'm going to have to, uh, uh, I'm going to have to clean the front of the case off, clean the back of the case off, plan out where my holes are going to be, drill my holes um, for the controls. And then I'm going to need some standoffs to stand the boards off the bottom of the case about a third of an inch, maybe a half an inch. Yeah, maybe a third of an inch. Um, and I don't have any standoffs that are just right, so I'm going to 3D print some. And I'll 3D print four for this board, four for the uh, VFO board, four for the relay driver board. Drill all my holes for those so I can get the boards mounted. And then I'll cut the PC board material for the divider, get a couple of right angle connectors for it, or right angle brackets for it so I can mount it in there. Drill holes on it, mount connectors, mount all the controls. Oh boy, a lot of work to do yet getting everything built into the new case. But we know the electronics are working. We know the PA is working. It's kicking out plenty of power. I'm real happy with that. All I really need to do is uh, get all this built together. Oh, and I'm going to redo labels uh, for the front and the back panel. And I'm going to do a video on that label process. There's been some interest in, in from, from local guys when they saw the labels on the other chassis. Um, these labels here. They were, they were pretty impressed by them, so I thought, well, you know, I should do a video on how I make those. So that'll be a separate video, how I make the labels. When I get to the point of making the labels, I'll film that and edit it separately. Uh, but this video will be part four in the transmitter, and uh, it's going to finish with the completed transformer. So the next, or the complete, completed transmitter. So the next, <laughs> it's going to go forward in time for you, the next clip you see after an edit coming up will be the completed transmitter. Like now. There we go. Through the magic of time travel, we've jumped ahead three days and a whole bunch of work, and we have a finished transmitter. How about that? Um, I just powered it on for the first time after wiring it all together and went through a series of tests, checking voltages, checking the function of the relays, you know, step by step before I hooked power to the power amplifier and everything worked perfectly. And then I hooked power to the power amplifier and everything worked perfectly. Woo! <laughs> anyway, um, it works. It works great. It works perfectly. Uh, I'll show you the uh, layout inside here in a moment. I was going to show you the GoPro view, but the GoPro won't power up. So I think it uh, didn't automatically power down or something and it ran its battery down. I'm going to have to charge it up. So. I'll have to move things around, use this camera, and uh, try to give you some different angles here in a, mom in a moment. But first, let's take a look at the scope. I just snapshot the uh, output of the, uh, of the transmitter across the dummy load. Now, uh, here's a note. Um, on the Patreon page, I had posted some pictures of the scope output when I first tested the PA board by itself. And... Uh, you know, as you saw probably from the previous part of this video, the readings were a little bit weird. Um, it was showing like 500 and some volts. And um, there was some debate and question about that on the Facebook page. We were going back and forth going, you know, what the heck's going on? Well, it was me. It was me. It was, uh, it was my oversight, of course. <laughs> you see, uh, I have the scope connected directly to the dummy load with a coax cable. I'm not using a probe. Um, the probe is normally on times 10 mode so it has a very high impedance, and the scope was set for a times 10 probe. So it was multiplying what it was seeing by, t by 10, and when it was hooked directly to the dummy load with a coax uh, through a BNCT, well, then it was doing a times 10. 
So anyway, these are the correct readings I just took um, just now. And as you can see, we got 51.6 volts peak to peak, and it's a nice clean sine wave coming out of the PA. Now the dummy load is 56.9 ohms impedance at 475 kilohertz or 400, right around there, you know, 56.9 ohms. So to figure the power output, we know we've got 51.6 volts peak to peak across 56.9 ohms. The first thing we do, and I'll put the math up on the screen, um, is we figure out what the RMS voltage value is. And you take the peak to peak voltage and you multiply it by 0.3535. And we get 18.2406 volts RMS. All right, so now we know the resistance and we know the RMS voltage, we can calculate the power. As you know from Ohm's law, power equals voltage squared divided by resistance. Um, we take the square of 18.2406 and we divide that by 56.9 ohms and we get 5.85 watts. So it's putting out almost 6 watts into the dummy load, which is fine. I was aiming for 8, but I'm happy with 6. Uh, you know, it's a QRP rig anyway, so hey, that's the definition of QRP. I might look at, uh, at what I can do to get more out of it later. I know I can up the supply voltage, but, uh, but I'm satisfied. We got a nice clean output. Um, I did an FFT measurement with the scope to look at the spectrum. And if I read the display right, the second harmonic was 60 dB down, which exceeds the required 50 dB. So the low pass filter is working great. Uh, I'm happy, you know, hey, I got, I got about a six watt transmitter for CW and that's just fine for me. Um, you know, being a QRP guy, that's great. So let me, uh, sh well, first off, I got it powered on right now. I got the key hooked up. And if I take the little uh, Grundig receiver and turn it on, Woo! Hitting pretty hard since so close to it. <laughs> I'll move it over there. As you can hear, it's keying nice and clean. So, uh, yeah, let's take a look at the inside. Okay, here's kind of a top down view. I've still got it powered on. Um, but, yeah, you can see that. You can see that. I'll go ahead and shut it down so I can unhook everything and really show you the, the views. Unhook everything. There we go. All right, so there's the layout. We've got the PA over here. We've got a PC board divider in here to cut down on the possibility for uh, RF messing with the electronics over there. On this side, we have the VFO board here with the Arduino Nano and the SI5351 breakout board. Uh, this is a separate relay board here for doing the transmit receive switching. So this relay here switches the antenna. Um, when you key down, it switches the antenna over to the PA. When you're keyed up, it switches the antenna over to this relay, which when you're keyed up, passes it through to the receive output jack. When you're keyed down, this relay grounds the receive output jack to protect your receiver. Um, even with it grounded, plenty of RF will, will come through, probably get an S9 plus signal on the receiver even though its, it's antenna input is grounded. Uh, there is a gimmick wire that's sort of wrapped once around the receiver connector here that comes back to clock one or the second output on the uh, breakout board and that's for spot tuning. So I hit the spot button that output turns on on your current frequency and you'll hear it on the receiver and that's how you'll tune. We've, we've demoed that before. Uh, so that's really it now. Um, I pass the signals through to the PA through this divider with RCA jacks here. So this is the VFO. Uh, there we go. So this is the, uh, the driver stage over here that takes the um, clock zero output transistor uh, uh, driver, converts that 3.3 volt uh, signal to about an 11 volt uh, signal that then is driven out this coax through the shield down here to the input on the PA to the gate. And then uh, there's your power MOSFET and there's the amplifier. You know, we've seen that. 
So that's pretty much it. I did these nice, uh, nice labels for the front and back. You can see it's, uh, it's going to look really, really dandy. And there's the back. I'm kind of proud of that. Put a little Morse code key here. <laughs> so yeah, it's, uh, it's done. I'm just going to put the case together and uh, start working on an antenna. See if we can make a contact. So the next video will be uh, the antenna experiments and hopefully the first contact. And then soon after that, I think we'll have QRP night. And uh, hopefully I'll have this in the field and be able to make a contact in the field. We'll see how that goes. Uh, by the time this video is live, I should have the whole project documented. Schematics, um, the STL files for these coil forms. So you can 3D print the coil forms. The uh, software for the Arduino. I'm going to put that up on GitHub and link it into the blog. So I'll have a blog post that will detail the entire project. All the files will be available for download right from there uh, so that you can build your own uh, simple CW transmitter for 630 meters. So look for that link in the description down below the video. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy we're done building this thing and I'm ready to get an antenna together and get on the air with it. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.